Hello, my name is Roisin and welcome or welcome back to my channel. We are into March now so I'm going to do my February reading wrap up but I am feeling rather unwell so this is probably going to be quite a quick wrap up. I have seven books to talk to you about that I read in the month of February. Um, so let's just get straight into it. I'm doing these in no particular order because my brain is not functioning. I'm just going to grab a book from the pile. So the first one I'm going to talk about is The Furrows by Namwali Sapel. Um, I read this for a vlog which is coming out soon. So I read The Old Drift by Namwali Sapel a few years ago and I really really loved it. It was my favourite book that I'd read that year or one of my favourite books that I'd read that year. So I was super excited to get to Sapel's new book. Um, and this is about a girl whose brother died uh, when she was 12 and he was 7 and she wants to tell the story of that but she says in the beginning I don't want to tell you what happened I want to tell you how it felt and so the book is an exploration of how it felt to lose her brother and the fallout of that from her family and I was really enjoying the first half of this book I love Sapel's writing I think it is stunning it is uncomfortable and it doesn't quite join up but in a way that seems to work really well for the topic um she tells us how her brother died over and over again and the story changes all the time and the story is about not being believed and her family not believing her she's called Cassandra and so although we should believe her we find ourselves struggling too as do all the people in her life as she gets older she keeps seeing her brother everywhere um, but how could that be since she knows that he died but halfway through this book it changes and the uh the focus changes the 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 point of view changes and what the book is about changes too. And whilst the book wasn't hugely logical in terms of what was going on in the first half, the emotional logic was there. But once we changed perspective, I no longer knew what was going on and I was so confused. I really wanted to love this, but this that was the review that I'd been hearing from so many people. And I thought that I would be different because I know that I love Savelle's writing, but I'm exactly the same. There were so many things that happened that didn't feel wrapped up and that is fine things don't have to be um concluded in any way in a satisfactory way but they just felt unexplored and kind of confusing i wasn't sure what was going on with various different characters and what the point was and i just found myself struggling because in the beginning the no plot just vibes like let it wash over you worked for me in the second half i found it got much plottier but it didn't get much clearer and I found that that was very difficult for me to keep up with. So I was really disappointed with this because one I love the writer and because two I love the first half so much that I really thought that I would love this one too and it just didn't work for me and that was such a shame. I also listened to the audiobook of Big Friendship by Anne Friedman and Amina Tussauds and I read this for a vlog um, where I was reading books by some of my favourite podcasters which is already out so I will leave linked in the cards above. This is a story of Anne Anne and Aminatu's friendship. They call it, call it a big friendship because besties or best friends feels too juvenile and because of the length of time that they have been friends and the big things that they have gone through together including Aminatu's cancer. Anne Friedman and Aminatu so used to have a, a podcast together called Call Your Girlfriend which was a podcast for long distance besties everywhere and so which should, they tell the story of how they met but they also tell the story of a difficult time in their friendship. They were still producing this podcast but they were on the rocks as friends. They were not getting on in the Way that they had and so they explore how it is to have a public friendship to be known for being besties and to be struggling they explore issues that cause them to struggle such as distance and online based friendships and interracial friendships and they do so by discussing things with friendship experts researchers in the field of friendship and also with other people who are well-known friends who are online friends as well as their own friends and whilst I thought this was perfectly fine I felt it never really went as deep as I wanted in either direction it felt like whilst it was trying to be a memoir they didn't go fully vulnerable which of course is their own um choice they can do what they wanted but the vulnerability didn't feel there which is something that I prefer in a memoir I would like people to be very introspective and this felt much more factual they it felt like it had very much therapy speak and it felt like it was a little distant and I felt the same way about the more theoretical aspects of what was discussed I felt like it didn't quite go there in terms of friendship there were a lot of things about these studies that were done that weren't really interrogated so so whilst I thought it was fine and I like the voices of both Anne and Aminatu, I think that they 
uh, the way that they write is very engaging and easy to connect with, I did feel like it was a bit too much of a surface level book for my personal taste. For that same vlog I also uh, read What We Don't Talk About When We Talk About Fat by Aubrey Gordon who has uh, is the co-host of the podcast Maintenance Phase and this was her talking about different topics about being a fat person, living with fatness and the systemic issues around that. It has chapters from flying in a plane to the BMI scale and to the um, virulent violent misogyny experienced by fat women. It uses both memoir and research and studies to talk about these situations, talking about Aubrey's own experience of being a fat woman and flying or of being a fat child at fat camp and also about the research into these things, the science that looks into things like BMI and the uselessness of it or the effects of fat stigma, of weight bias um, against people and how that affects their relationship with medical professionals and also the rest of the world. And um, I again I enjoyed it, I thought I like Aubrey's writing although I would have preferred her to narrate the book herself because I'm so used to her as a podcaster but I think this book came out before Maintenance Phase and her most recent book um, she does read the audiobook for. So I definitely want to read that. Someone commented on my book about, on my video about podcasters saying that um, when you consume a lot of someone's media um, online, when you read their book a lot of it is just rehashings of that and I did feel that with this book, um, that it was rehashings of things that she has also made episodes about on maintenance phase, which is fine, she's only one person, she's only got a certain amount of research to be able to do. This one did dive more into her own personal experience and I did appreciate that, it definitely had the vulnerability that I thought that Big Friendship was lacking. Um, and so it was probably my favourite out of the books that I read for that vlog, but still not quite what I was looking for. Um, I think that Maintenance Phase has more of what I'm looking for um, in terms of like engaging with the uh, research and really going down and breaking things down and being very analytical about it. Um, and also humour, which I think this book didn't have, which is fine, it, it's not what it was marketed as, but I enjoy the humour of Maintenance Phase and I think I went into it expecting more of that. Another book I read this month was The Makioka Sisters by uh, Jonichiro Tanizaki and I actually read this over January and February but I finished it this month. This was our big book book club pick for January and February and so we have now done the live show for this where me and Matthew Sharapa discussed this book for about 45 minutes so if you want really in-depth thoughts and me having a mental breakdown because of technology issues I will you can find it linked in the cards above. Um, I had a really great time doing that chat, Matthew was a great co-host um, and so I hope you will check that out if you are at all interested. Um, this is the story of four sisters in Japan in the 1930s. The older two are married and the younger two are um, not yet married and the basic forward momentum pushing of the plot is that they are trying to get the third sister married because the fourth sister can't get married until the third sister is because they are such a traditional Japanese family. And so we experience her them trying to get their sister married and the relationships between them and the fractiousness sometimes of these relationships. They are really, I really love the way that they are explored as a family dynamic. I think it feels really um, true to life, uh, the ways that they sort of passive aggressively uh, affect a uh, talk towards one another and the ways that they get really upset with one another and then say nothing about it. Our main character is a difficult thing to dis to choose between some of them. Yukiko is the sister who's trying to get married and her, her very um, understated refusal to get married is definitely having a lot of impact on the plot. Sachiko, who is her next elder sister, who is the one trying really hard to get her married, and also her younger sister, Taiko, who then can't do anything else and is trying to break free and is the more modern sister. It's a really interesting exploration of a time period and because it was serialised it has a rhythm to it that I think makes it very easy to read. Both the translation is very readable um, but also the the cyclical nature makes it easy to get back into and to keep going on. There are some really beautiful moments of writing about the natural world and natural disasters including a flood that I actually found so compelling that this made it like unputdownable in that point um, and there is just so much in it, so much discussion of decay and of um, these women who are trying to keep their health and their youth so rigidly um, and also of Japan itself I think is reflected in that as well and the sort of loomingness of the war and of what's going on in Japan's history at the time period but the way that these people are very separated from it. They feel very separated from the world altogether um, and I really enjoyed it, it's really lovely, really wonderful writing um, and 
I think it's beautiful and I'm really glad that I chose it for my first, well actually Matthew chose it, I gave Matthew four options and he picked this one to be our first book club pick and I'm glad that that is what happened um, because I really enjoyed it. Uh, speaking of the book club, if you are thinking of joining us for the next two months in March and April we will be reading War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy um, and so I'm excited and nervous in equal measure. Um, Simon from Footnotes and Tangents on Bookstagram is doing a year-long read of this and he has talked about how it's actually it seems intimidating because it's giant and Russian but actually it's kind of a soap opera um, and so I'm excited to get to that um, but I do know that Kieran from KG Books has not got very far with it um, as he was intending to um, and it does begin with French. It is translated though um, in my edition at least. Two books this month I read and absolutely fell in love with um, so I'm going to talk to you about both of them now. The first one is On Beauty by Zadie Smith and I read this again in a vlog so I will leave that vlog linked in the cards above. This is my new favourite book of the year. It's my new favourite book of last year as well. It's the best book I've read since 2021. Um, I absolutely love this book. This is based on Howard's End by E.M. Forster, which I also read in that vlog, about a man named Howard um, and his end in multiple different ways. He is a art historian academic who is just basically grumpy about everything. We follow him and his family. His wife Kiki, who is this gorgeous, lovely, like really warm, uh, empathetic person, but who doesn't have the like academic knowledge that Howard has and their three children who are all in various states of exasperation with Howard and to a certain extent um, looking down on Kiki as well. Ki Howard is English and Kiki is American and they lived in England to begin with but they have moved to a liberal arts college in New England. The eldest son at the beginning of the book has gone to the house of Monty Kipps in England who is uh, Howard's academic rival. He is a professor of history, I think. He is a black man, but he is very much against affirmative action, conservative political agitator, uh, very much of the traditional family values and Christianity thing. You see how those two families interact, how we begin, much like in Howard's End, with a an engagement that uh, is doomed as soon as it begins but has repercussions for this family. I think that Zadie Smith is one of the best writers of character that I have read. I love the like slightly sardonic way that she writes, the way that she is often um, being satirical and it's very like amusing the way that she writes these characters but at the same time she has a great affection for them. They are fully human, they feel very fleshed out and they're very hypocritical um, um, but we can understand their perspectives. The ideas of class and of these liberal people in their ivory tower who have great ideals but the way that they enact them in real life, the sins of fathers and how those affect you as well. It's one of those books that I fell in love with from the first page. I knew I was gonna love this and I think I love this more than White Teeth. I love every aspect of it and like I said she writes characters so well and it's a book where it's not like there are huge events or huge plot points um, but there is so much exploration of humanity and I really loved it. it lo yesterday it was announced she's coming out with a new book which is historical fiction so I'm very excited um, and I think I'm gonna read more. Read more Smith this year. The other book that I really loved this month um, is Rebel Bodies by Sarah Graham and I have to acknowledge that Sarah Graham is a good friend of mine um, but that doesn't mean this book is not brilliant. This book is brilliant and I'm not just saying that because she is a good friend of mine. She's a brilliant writer, she's written a brilliant book and I really recommend you read this. So this is A Guide to the Gender Health Gap Revolution and it is about the issues of um, gendered health um, and how healthcare affects people of uh, women and minority genders differently um, and the limits of research and also the biases that go into medicine um, and she f goes through multiple different parts of medicine it is not just focused on ob health although that is part of it she talks about childbirth um, and she talks about periods and endometriosis PCOS but she also talks about things like uh, mental health and hysteria and the history of that and also of um, chronic illness and the lack of research into chronic illnesses that particularly affect women. Um, she, she talks about the research gap, the pain gap, the belief in, believing in women, being seen as hysterical and how that affects not only their mental health treatment but also their physical health treatment and how those things interact. Um, but I think what is especially brilliant is that um, Sarah weaves together stories as well as um, research which is what I've talked about in some of the other books but these aren't Sarah's stories, they are stories of people she has spoken to, interviewed, 
over her career as a journalist about this topic um, and so she weaves those stories those personal things in with research that backs up the stories that she is telling and that paints a broader picture and I think she does such a good job of like tying together the personal and the political um, in fact the first chapter is about the personal it is political and I think that that is kind of the thesis statement for the book and she also does a really great job of trans inclusion I mean I'm not trans so I can't say that from that perspective but as a chronically ill woman I have read a lot of books on this topic and I find that a lot of the times transness is just a throwaway line um, but Sarah makes sure to include in every section um, she includes how this affects trans people both um, trans men and trans women and non-binary people she includes all the throwaway line it is an integral part of each chapter which I really really appreciated I also really appreciated that there is a toolbox at the end of each chapter from both Sarah and from um, other experts that she's interviewed to help you advocate for yourself in healthcare settings and also um, to advocate to change things she talks about how it is ridiculous that we should have to advocate for ourselves so much but given that we do like it's both practical and political and I really enjoyed that I think a lot of the time books like this can feel like a scream into the void um, and this doesn't it feels really practical and I really um, think appreciated that so yeah Sarah is wonderful uh, and you should all buy her book <laughs> and then the final book that I read this month was Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin which I do have a physical copy of and I can't find it anywhere which is awkward because it needs to go back to the library but this is a short little horror book about a woman who is talking to a boy um, in a and we're not sure where they are um, but something has happened uh, and it feels like it's health related and she is telling the story of what happened and he is trying to get back to you how it started where it came from and it is a story of strange children and feels almost folklore in terms of the story it's very much got a lot of the horror tropes of strange children and of something being your only option to try and get out of a difficult situation it's a very short book and it's one where you never really get fully explained anything and everything feels unsure and uncertain and I felt so tense when I was reading this book um, and I felt really compelled to keep reading um, the writing is wonderful and in terms of giving you that feeling it is so unsettling and so difficult to read um, but at the same time you feel like you have to you have to keep going um, I actually uh, I don't normally like get that emotionally affected by books but um, I woke up in the middle of the night um, and I went to the loo and I was like there is something in this house <laughs> there's definitely something in this house um, so it definitely uh, affected me in that way the one thing I would say about this book though is that there are elements of disfigurement children with um, disfigurements and I'm not sure how that was handled I'm not an expert in this situation um, but I feel like they were kind of used as a point of horror um, and I don't know if it was being done in like a social commentary kind of way or if they were just being used um, so I'm not really sure about that aspect of it it's a very short book and not my usual style so um, although I've been going into those weirder books recently um, but yeah it's just one that I'm I don't feel certain that I know how I feel about that particular aspect of it it's a bit weird and um, yeah so I, I don't think I can speak to it properly but I did feel a little uncomfortable with its treatment of disfigurement. Those are the seven books that I read in February. I hope you have enjoyed this reading wrap up. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any thoughts or opinions if you've read any of these books I would love to hear from you and if you haven't then what was your favourite book that you read in February? I keep wanting to say March because we're a few days into March now um, but thank you for watching and please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe. I put out new videos twice a week so I will see you again very soon. Um, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.